Uh, Sofia Pride, uh, it's like something really new for Bulgaria. I don't know whether you know what. It's, it's the annual gay pride in Sofia happening. And uh, it's only its fifth year. And uh, this year we gathered in January and we realized there is no organization, there is no money. And the people that organized the previous prides did not want to organize it anymore because they were all burned. And we were like, okay, what are we gonna do? So we collected people from several NGOs and people from embassies that uh, also wanted to join us. And we decided, okay, we do an organizational committee and we tried to, to do that thing because it's stupid not to have Sofia Pride anymore. It's just so sad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's an explanation of Sofia Pride. As I said, it's like, this year was the fifth year when it happened. It started with only 100 people and it's considered to be the biggest human rights event in Bulgaria. This year we <coughs> collected over 1,500 people. That's the team, 19 volunteers coming from different NGOs, different backgrounds. We managed to get a lot of partners. The thing is that you're going to see later, but I'm going to explain now that uh, actually we did this event happening with a really, really small budget, but with many partners. Actually, we had many, many things for free, many things that are actually very expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because it's hard to get money, we went to the right places to ask them just to provide us things in order to make it happen. Uh, yeah. So what we have here, what's actually Sofia Pride, it's not only going out on the streets, screaming and dancing, <laughs> because <laughs> that's, not, that. <laughs> that's not the only, the, only, the only thing happening. We want to, first of all, to raise the debate in Bulgaria, because that's a country where LGBT people are not yet really accepted. Homosexuality is still considered something not really normal. What about families? That's something, let's not talk about it. So we want to have uh, some days of discussions, of debates, of uh, different things and perspectives to show to people what's actually LGBT people. To show their art, to show what's that community to have enough visibility on television, radios, newspapers. So we do the Art Week, which is happening everywhere. But this, this year, it was the biggest uh, Art Week in Sofia. It was the first time when we really had a good Art Week. So it was, uh, we managed to, to, to get uh, many artists that wanted to show their work. We managed to, work in collaboration with uh, six of the most <coughs> popular and visited clubs in Sofia. Actually, their work was displayed in uh, straight bars, <laughs> let's call it like, yeah, the most visited discos and clubs in Sofia. And one book presentation, the first uh, LGBT book in Bulgaria, of a Bulgarian author, which is me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was the other event that happened. Uh, it's like every day there was one uh, presentation of an exhibition and afterwards there was a movie screening on a different place, which is again a very central place. It's uh, in front of the National Palace of Culture and it's the biggest uh, open air cinema in Sofia, in the heart of Sofia. So there for the first time we had for free, we had the possibility to use all the resources for free and we managed to get uh, the license for all these movies for free, to screen them and together every evening from 300 to 500 people watching in public place uh, LGBT movies, which was something really good as an accomplishment for us. So yeah, these two. And then of course the, the last uh, event uh, which happened after the, the Art Week and the movie week was the, the Pride Parade itself, which was 
a very, very successful event because we managed to, for the first time again, many first times this year, to, to get uh, the most <coughs> famous singers to sing for us for free, which is a very good accomplishment for us because in Bulgaria it's still, it's like we have very few visible LGBT people and people are trying to avoid. It's like that's the reason we cannot get money from companies. We try to approach them as we do every year and the only company that officially gave some money was a company that gave hundred dollars. <laughs> All the other companies said no, we are not ready. It's like we want to have some others first and then we, we're gonna jump on the list. But what does it mean officially? So it means they get unofficially? No, that means uh, it's like I'm considering as part of all these clubs, mm -hmm. all these uh, places that actually didn't give us money, mm -hmm. but they offered their spaces or, or equipment or expertise. So actually, yeah, there were companies that supported us, but the ones that gave money were only one <laughs> that gave hundred dollars, <laughs> euros, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's the program of the event. It's like you can see, oh, you cannot see because you cannot read, but you can see the days at least, that every day there is something happening. And that's the budget, which is, it's like the day after the Pride, there, was, uh, there were articles in the newspapers uh, that the Pride parade costed over one million. <laughs> I'm really proud. <laughs> I'm really proud <laughs> because all the <coughs> haters, so-called haters in Bulgaria, because they saw us on television every day. We were on newspapers every day. Every day there was an exhibition, there was a movie screening, there was something happening, like really visible. And there were many famous people coming to our events, not uh, openly gay people, but famous people like stars, singers, movie producers, people from the art. So they were like, that's a very expensive event, it costed <laughs> over one million. And that's the, the real cost. It's 7,100 euros, which we collected it's like partially from uh, uh, small, small projects. For example, the US Embassy gave us a little bit of money. And the other, mo the other money is the first time we are getting actually money from, so much money from individuals. Because we said, okay, if they want pride, they have to pay for it. Because we cannot pay it. It's like we don't have money. So we made people feel part of it. That's actually the five different means we collected this, uh, yeah, 7,000. No, it's like one third of it. That's in Leva. Mm -hmm. So the first event we organized was uh, we took part in a giving, giving circle in Sheraton Ho Hotel in Sofia. And actually there were four different projects that uh, were part of that giving circle and the Sofia Pride was one of them and actually Sofia Pride collected the most of the money. Uh, the second mean we used was uh, the PayPal and the bank transfers, it's like we try to advertise it as much as possible through the social networks, like uh, we made separate uh, uh, special photos like to share on Facebook how to donate money and also we organized five, yes, five or six different parties in clubs which were to collect money. It's like one of them was really huge one, we got uh, even the entrance fee and the others people could just come, <coughs> yeah, sure. People could just come and uh, donate money and one of the things we, we've done, it's like just as a souvenir. Just as, as, as a souvenir, it's like we produced a lot of badges, it's like some of them are here. So people could just take a badge and give the money they want to give. And uh, yeah, during the event there were some people that gave money and the text messages that normally you saw work very well in Bulgaria. <laughs> but for the LGBT people they don't. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's very complicated to get money for such an unpopular cause because it's really controversial. So yeah, only 108 yeah, SM text messages we get through that campaign. That follows from the giving circle. Who was participating in the giving circle? This w these were guests of the Sheraton Hotel? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's like every, every organizer because there were four different projects that took, were part of that giving circle. So every project organizer invited its guests. And it was really funny because, for example, our guests were donating money <coughs> for the Roma project. And some people that were there for something else donated money for the LGBT, so it was really a good thing. And you could really bid and, okay, I'm giving a uh, hundred leva if somebody else is giving fifty. <laughs> So I think that's what we're really <laughs> happening in Bulgaria and in the, in the near future we're going to have more and more uh, donation circles and they're going to be more and more successful. This is just part of it. It's like some of the banners we made for Facebook. We made about 15 of these with different photos. Uh, this there is the photo. It's a flyer for one of the parties. Up there is the badges. An artist made, the, made them for us for free, the design, and we printed them out to give to people. This is for the SMSs, one of the photos. It's like we made very many things just for this small amount of money, just because it's very hard to get the sum. It's, you can see it. <coughs> My colleague from Bulgaria can say who are these people. It's like really famous women in Bulgaria, singers. One of them was our Eurovision contestant last year. The other is one of the most famous singers. So they were singing on our pride for the first time, not being afraid that they're going to point them and say, OK, you are gay. <laughs> and we got a, yeah, also a medal, award <laughs> from the gay games. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. I can talk a lot, but yeah. <laughs>